Tell me the process of going from character to sketch of face and head to then sculpting a face and head. Uh, because they're fantastic, they're amazing, they're masks. I mean, we as actors, we work with masks. You know, we're taught in theater school, you work with the masks and, you know, the, the master mask maker. But we can never understand how that artifice can hold so much power, voice, color, background. Mm -hmm. And I look at your heads and they speak. Mm -hmm. So how, what's the There's process? a lot of doodling and a lot of um, unforced doodling in a sketchbook. And by unforced, I mean I usually do my best doodling while watching TV. When I'm just, you know, absentmindedly drawing. If I sit down to draw, then I, I put all this weight on my shoulders of it. You have to draw something perfect. So <laughs> if I just carry it around and absentmindedly, and I don't show my sketchbook to many people. It's not something that I do. It's just private, you know. And, and then I'll see something and, and make a big circle around it and check it so that I know that that's it. So with Penny, she emerged quite quickly and, uh, and other characters took their time. And some characters I can just sit down and draw right away. And then by the time I'm sculpting, uh, it's either I do all the sculpting based on the show or I have uh, an old assistant who comes in and helps me, Angela Talbot. Um, who I met when she was in high school, and she's just one of those incredibly gifted girls. But with Angela, I can show her the sketch, and I can do the voice, and I can act it out for her in the studio. It's very Disney, like the old animators used to work. I will literally just walk around the studio playing that character for her, and she'll say, okay. And an hour later, she'll have sculpted what's on the sketch, but have the essence of the character. And what, she, what material is she working It's in? just plasticine, just cheap plasticine. That, we sculpt it because we make molds and then cast it. But um, the sculpting is a big one, you know, and it's funny, a great story about sculpting is when I was writing um, Provenance, um, I was kind of stuck in the writing or in the rewriting, uh, but we'd already started slowly building the show maybe or designing it. And uh, I remember one day Iris Turcott said to me on the phone, she yelled at me, she said, stop writing. Don't write for six weeks, go sculpt the heads. And I said, no, I don't want to do that yet. And she said, sculpt the heads, and then you'll see them, and they'll all be lined up on the table over your shoulder, and as, then, you, then you'll have the characters, and you can just write them and talk, because I write out loud as well, and I wasn't seeing anything. So mm -hmm. I did take six weeks and sculpted all the heads for the provenance, and it just unblocked me as a writer. So it is, you know, each one is different. Uh, like on Penny Plain, I knew early on that the set was something I had to design. I had to see the physical world right, that I was going right. to be in uh, to indicate the writing. Like, how was it going to make this world grow? And where was I physically? Because I was getting out of the way on this show. There's less Ronnie in this show than there's been in any. Because you're above? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't come down. It's Penny's apartment. It's Penny's world. Yeah. And you're always above the world. Right. right. And I only show myself really for one little flashback, you know, with two hand puppets. Right. But for 95% of the show, I'm out of the way. Um, you think you're out of the way. Well, I'm more out of the We're way. We're watching you. Yeah. And, and that was very intentional because I, I've been quite vocal in the last five years of I can't go to a puppet show. You can't swing a cat without hitting a puppeteer's face. You know, there's so much of this kind of puppetry. Right. Where there's so much mugging going on from the puppeteer to show you what the puppet's thinking. And I thought, oh, God, I hate this trend. And I know I'm hugely responsible for it because for 25 years I've been in full view with my puppets. So a lot of younger puppeteers are in full view. But um, I thought, I think we've forgotten how powerful puppets are. And I think I've forgotten what it's like to see marionettes do all the work. So I intentionally made the strings longer than ever before, and I made the bridge higher, so I'm a foot higher than I've ever been, and I just physically had to get out of the way and do a marionette show again. And I wasn't sure it was going to work. From the heads to the bodies, how do you work out, how does the math work that you know the posture and I need to put the strings here and I need the body made in such a way here so mm -hmm. it can do this kind of movement. How do you work that out? Well, that, you know, that's something I was given when I was very young. And so I build marionettes uh, that are called counterbalanced marionettes. And what I do for each character is I draw them full size on brown craft paper and I draw front view and align that with a profile of the whole body. So. Uh, a lot of puppeteers will just use, excuse me, stock body patterns for their whole career, male and female, and change the heads. 
uh, with counterbalancing, you build in the posture. So if a character is like Penny, a little hunched over, you design that in the profile. And then you split the body weight, it's arbitrary, you do it with your eye, and you put a line down the profile and that's called the line of balance. So most of your key joints are on that and the two strings that hold the weight of the puppet are the shoulder strings and the shoulders are attached on the line of balance. Right. So that when you animate the puppet, they do all of this stuff and when you relax it and just hold it or hang it up, gravity returns it to its characteristic stance. So Penny always stands like an old lady. Right. And a, a barrel-chested hero will always stand like a barrel-chested hero. So it means that I'm building the posture of that character into the physical puppet. So remind me again, how do you get her knees to be old age bent when she's neutral? How do you do that? Well, that's drawn. You know, I, I draw that bend and then the line of balance, it'll go through okay. her hip joint. So her hips are jointed on that line, and usually the ankle joint, the knee is going to go off and do its own thing. Right. But, and so that leg, before it's jointed, so you carve the whole leg too. So that leg is carved in that bend. And so when you join it, when you cut the knee apart, it only goes to that place. It doesn't overextend. It's always bent. Same with arms. Like they never go straight if you, that's what you've designed. And you have a whole team that creates these? Yeah, I have a lot of people help me, but in terms of the bodies, I, I do all the designing because at the drafting table, I really am rehearsing and casting the show. So I do that in isolation and I will stand up and walk around like Penny and I'll check my hump in the mirror or what a gut does or, you know, or I do all of that and then I draw it. So I'm... I'm actually casting the show and starting to rehearse a little bit and walking around in my studio talking to myself. Uh, and that's not something I would want to relinquish to anyone else because I'm going to perform them. So I do that. And in terms of carving and jointing, I do all that myself. I have a lot of people help cast heads or, you know, like Angela comes in and sculpts some of the heads and people help make molds. There's a lot of stuff people help me do. but. In terms of the mechanics of posture, I need to do that myself. And so the building of each body and the head, how, long, how many months is that? Well, this whole show took a year. I mean, the other thing to remember is the script is happening at the same time. Um, you can't recostume a puppet during the show. There aren't little elves backstage changing clothes. So there's four marionettes of Penny of this age in the show. So I have to build four pennies from scratch uh, just to accommodate costumes. I think in Street of Blood there were 12 or 13 versions of Esme Mazengill because we saw her in flashback as a young actress and as a child actress and five versions of her at the age we see her in the play. So there were a, a dozen puppets just for that one character. Does size matter? <laughs> You know what I mean. I know what you mean. Uh, I'm told it does, but I would have to disagree. I, really? I honestly think that, should I be um, given the grace to continue for many more years, that the work will get smaller and more intimate. Um, but, you know, like I said, we live in a time where some big commercial shows and some great successes use large-scale puppetry. I'm one guy. I don't want to be lugging something big around on stage. I, it, it gets in the way of my ability to have four characters on stage. In this scale, I can have discussions, and I can have multi-character pieces, <clears throat> and I can still manage it all by myself. So for me, uh, I, for me, I'm not such a size queen in terms of what I do on stage.